Okay, so today we are going to cover how to connect an Android phone to on-premise Exchange email. So this doesn't apply to Microsoft 365. This is only for if you are using what's called on-premise Exchange email. And Android phones, there's a lot of different types of Android phones. There's Samsung and there's, there's other types as well. And for all the strengths of the Android platform, standardization across the various manufacturers is not one of their strengths. I say that to say there may be some aspects of what you see in my example screen captures of Android that's not going to match up with yours exactly. And unfortunately, there's not really anything I can do about that. But the principles at play here, the information that you have to supply and put in, that's the same regardless of which type of Android you have. So hopefully this will map okay to whatever your phone is. Uh, worst case scenario, reach out to your IT person and have them actually walk you through this process. Okay, so what you need to get started, you obviously need your email address, something at whatever your domain is .com, and you're going to need to know for sure what the password is to that email. Now, that may not be something that you have readily handy. Uh, it depends on the type of network that you have. It could be that this is the same password you use to sign into your work computer. It could be a different password. If you're unsure about that, contact your IT person, and they should be able to assist you with determining what that is or resetting it so you know what it is, that type of thing. You're going to need to know your company's domain and username for you. This is info that you just need to get from your IT person. There's really not an easy way to intuit exactly what this is going to be because it varies from setup to setup. So contact your IT person to get this information. Just let them know, hey, I'm looking to connect my Android phone to the email. And uh, I'm told that I'm going to need this information for it, which you will. You're also going to need to know what the Exchange server address is. This is usually some kind of a uh, internet looking domain name, you know, something dot something dot com. So typically that's the way that that's formatted. It could be that it's an IP address. That's a little bit less usual, but it's possible. So you need to know what that is. You need to know what the port is that's being used for your Exchange server. For many people, that's 443, but confirm this with your IT person just to make sure. And finally, the security type. Uh, security types, there, there are a few that, that may be involved. The most common one nowadays is SSL slash TLS. But get, get your IT person to confirm what your selection should be for this when the time comes in your phone. So let's dive in here. So on an Android phone, this is one of the ways that it can look. Again, yours may vary, but most of the time, what you're going to be looking for is an app that's actually called email. And you're going to want to tap that to open it. Now, if you've already got email accounts set up, then tapping on the email icon is probably just going to open up one of those inboxes and let you start looking at email. In which case, you'll need to look through the menu of the mail phone, the mail app, and find the option for add new account or set up new email. If you've never set up email in this app before, then this is typically what you're going to see is it's going to ask you what type of email account do you want to set up? And you are going to want to choose for on-premise exchange, you're going to want to choose corporate. When you do that, the first thing it's going to prompt you for is your email address and your password, like we talked about at the beginning of the video. So you go ahead and fill those pieces of information in. And then you click sign in. I think if you click manual setup there, it'll, it'll end up at the same place. But one way or the other, you need to end up here where it's, it's asking you for additional information. So you've already supplied your email address, but now is where it's going to want the domain backslash and username. It's going to be very important this is typed in exactly as such. That domain name that we had you retrieve at the beginning of the video, then a backwards slash, just hunt through the special symbols on your keyboard and on the phone to find that, and then the username. It must be put in exactly like this, no spaces. Uh, the password should already be filled in, but for, if for some reason it got blanked out, 
switching screens here, just type it in again. And now you're going to supply the Exchange server. That's that bit of info that we gathered at the beginning there. Here, here is where you'll specify the port. It's going to default to 443, which is probably correct for most situations. But if your IT person gave you a different port, you're going to want to put that in here. Now continue scrolling down this page. Don't hit next yet. Scroll down a little bit further and you're going to see the final piece there, the security type. This is going to default to SSL slash TLS. That's going to be true for most situations, but again, you've confirmed this with your IT person. If they tell you to choose something else, then tap that to you see a little drop down menu and you can choose something else. When you're done with this, you just click next. All right, now it's going to ask you, it's going to prompt you. This is kind of like a, it's just a default extra step saying, hey, you know, you need to apply the security policy for this thing. There's really no way around this. Uh, if you have any concerns about this or questions about it, direct them to your IT person. But for most people, you just want to go ahead and just click apply. And then that'll advance you to the next screen. So assuming all that information was correct, now... Your mailbox is, tip is basically set up, but now it's asking you for some information about how you want it to synchronize. Now, if you look at the very top of the screen here where it says email sync period three days, that's the default. That means that there will be three days worth of email that will sync um, on your phone. So, you know, today, day before yesterday, the day before that, day before that. So just the really current stuff. But if you need more email than that on your phone. You can tap that and choose some other selection that, that synchronizes a little bit more email there. Generally speaking, you want to synchronize as little email as you can get away with. <laughs> you know, you, there's no option to carry your entire mailbox with you. These, these mailboxes, the longer you use them, the bigger they get. They get very unwieldy and a phone just can't handle that very well. So the app doesn't even allow you to synchronize your whole thing, but you could go as much as a month if you want. But keep in mind that there may be performance issues with that. Uh, it may not perform as well. Uh, and it's never going to be your entire mailbox. That's, that's an operation best done either through the Outlook web access interface. That's the best place to do your searches of your mailbox. Or maybe in Microsoft Outlook on a desktop computer. The phone is mainly going to be useful for current email, you know, relatively current email, and for sending email as well. So set the email sync period to whatever your preference is, or maybe your IT person had a recommendation. The same can be adjusted for the calendar sync period. By default, the calendar sync period is six months. So you could adjust that to a different period if you want. You can, and with the calendar, you can even say always stay synced, and it's going to attempt to synchronize your entire calendar. Uh, there's limited advantage to that. Um, and similar principles apply as what we were talking about with email, that some operations are just not, are better done on a desktop computer or on Outlook web access than they are on your phone. Uh, because of space constraints, because of, you know, there's just not as strong a processor available on the phone. But set this to whatever your, your needs are, and the same principle applies. Whatever the least amount is that you can get away with syncing and still do your job right, that's what I would recommend setting it to. Okay, so once you've tweaked both of those, you can click Done. And one final, like, uh, terms of service type of notification is going to come up. It's a very scary sounding one. Oh, this thing could wipe out your phone, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I don't know why that they choose to phrase it this way, but it, you know, there are certain permissions that the phone needs in order to be able to properly interact with this mailbox and vice versa, that the mailbox needs to properly interact with the phone. And they are scary sounding permissions. But in my experience, they're generally very safe. If you have concerns about these, bring them up with your IT person. But for most people, it's just going to be a matter of, hey, it's just the nature of how these things work, and we click Activate. Once you've done so, it's going to confirm for you that your account has been set up, and now you can specify an account name. Now, so basically, this name is helping you identify this mailbox versus other mailboxes you're going to have on the phone. So for most people, I recommend that you name the account 
uh, after your company, or you might just call it work. And then you'd have one for work, and then you might have a different email that you've set up, you know, for your home email or something like that. It's really up to you. I don't think that there's any, there's not any right or wrong way to do that. It's a description for your benefit. So set it to something that makes sense for you. And then you just click done. So have a great day, and I hope this was helpful to you.